Okay, so specifically in section 1.2, we're going to look at um, analyzing categorical data before we take a look at quantitative data. So in this section, you're going to take a look at bar graphs and pie charts, understand the difference between good and bad graphs, be able to construct and interpret a two-way table, and understand the relationship between two categorical variables, and we're just going to get a brief introduction on how to organize statistical problems. Okay, so we know that categorical variables, what they do is they place individuals into one of two several groups or categories, so that means we're sort of putting them into bins. The values of the categorical variable are labels for the different categories. The distribution of a categorical variable lists the count or percent of individuals that fall into each category. So when I talk about values of a categorical variable, think of that as if you had different bins sitting in front of you and you were putting people in the bins, what would you label the bins? In this case, we're going to talk quickly about music and the type of music people like to listen to. So if you had a whole bunch of bins, you would label them adult contemporary, adult standards, contemporary, country, news, oldies, so on and so forth. So those are your labels for your different categories. The distribution is going to tell us how many people fit into each of those categories. Okay, and that's called a frequency table. A relative frequency table is just a percent. So we know down here there's 13,838 people total. What the percent does, or the relative frequency table does, is it takes, for example, the adult contemporary 1,556, divides it by the total to give us what percent of people listen to adult contemporary. Now notice the percents down here add up to 99.9. .9. Uh, if you just take a quick second and think about that, you might say, wait a second, we should be looking at 100, but there's not, um, there could be potential rounding error here, or maybe not perfectly exact, so that's not that's why it's not rounding up to 100%, okay? Um, so just quickly, the variable is the title of the value. So in this case, the variable is the format of music that people like to listen to. The values are the various radio stations, news talk, oldies, religious, rock, Spanish language, so on and so forth. The count is the number of people in each bin. So think your variable is the big thing that you're looking at. We're looking at music. The values are the labels that are on your bins. The counts are the number of people in each bin. And the percent is the percent within each bin compared to the total. So the two different types of tables that we looked at was a frequency table and a relative frequency table. Um, just keep in mind a frequency table takes a look specifically at the counts, how many are in each bin. The relative frequency table takes a look at what percent of the total is in each bin. Okay, so for example, how many people like to listen to Spanish language? You take 750, divide it by that total, Okay, to get the fact that only 5.4% of people listen to Spanish language on the radio. Keep in mind these are not data tables. They're basically summaries of a distribution of categorical variables. Okay, so we're specifically looking at the distribution. How are all of these people distributed among my various bins? Each of these rows contains the value of the variable, or basically the label on your bin, um, and how often it takes on each value. All right, so from this previous section, um, take a look at this. You're going to answer a few questions on the next slide, so you might have to sort of toggle back and forth for a second, or if you have it printed out, but go ahead and take a look at what are the individuals, what variables are being measured, and I kind of already answered that last question for you, but um, do you remember why the count does not add up to 100? So go ahead and press pause, answer these, and then take a look at the answers on the next slide.
how'd you do? Okay, so we looked at um, our various bins and we took a look at how many were in each bin, but if we're just looking at a bunch of bins and numbers within each bin, that might be kind of hard for us to understand, like what exactly is this distribution look like? What exactly is it telling us? Frequency tables can be hard to read. Um, oftentimes it's much easier to analyze a distribution, specifically a um, categorical distribution by looking at a bar graph or a pie chart. So if you notice um, for our frequency count we have our bin labels at the bottom and then just a nice bar graph to see how many are within each bin. This is a nice representation. It's very easy to see that eh, not too many like contemporary hit, uh, not too many people like rock or Spanish, but a lot of people like country and a lot of people like news talk. So notice how when we display our distributions in a bar chart or even a pie chart, it's very visual and very easy for a reader or for somebody who maybe is not super statistical thinking to take a look at that and say, hey, wait a second, look at this nice. What is this, 16%? A lot of people like news talk radio. Ooh, what's this, 5%? Not too many people listen to Spanish. Okay, so it's just a very easy way for a non-mathematical person to take a look at it. All right, so what I'd like you to do is just um, right click on this link right here. This is going to just quickly tell you the difference between a histogram and a bar chart. So a histogram we're going to look at in the next section, but specifically categorical variables are bar charts. Don't use histograms for categorical variables. What's important in this bar graph is that each category or each bin, think about your bins, is a bar. So contemporary, um, adult standards, contemporary hit, that is each a bin. The heights of the bars are either going to be the counts, so how many are in each bin, or what percent, sorry, what percent each bin takes up of the total. Oftentimes bar graphs are better than a pie chart uh, because they can compare data that's measured in the same units. So it's it's a little bit easier because, um, and it's also a little bit more visual, I can see very quickly what my different bins and categories are. All right, so there are good and bad graphs. All right, so I just kind of like this. Um, go ahead and take a look at this. <laughs> We're gonna be talking about what is a good versus a bad graph look like. So just be aware of that, that all, not all graphs are created equal. All right, um, what bar graphs can do is they can compare several quantities by comparing the heights of the bars that represent those quantities. So it's very easy to see which is the tallest, which is the shortest. Keep in mind, when people are reading graphs, they react to the area of the bar as well as the height. So when you're creating it, make sure your bars are all equally the same wide. Because if one is wider than the other, even if it's a lot shorter, people think, oh, that that one's a lot wider, it must have a lot more counts in it, when in fact it doesn't. So avoid the temptation to replace the bars with pictures for greater appeal. That can end up being misleading, even if you're trying to make a pretty graph. Uh, leave the bars there instead of pictures. Okay, so if you take a look at this one, um, bar graphs do have some problems when you don't follow these three rules up here. This is an ad, this was an actual ad for DirecTV. There are some major problems with this. Uh, can you think about what they are. So go ahead, press pause, and see if you can figure out what are some of the issues with this graph. So what'd you find? Number one, the heights aren't really accurate. Um, according to the graph, the difference between um, 81 and 95 is much greater than the difference between 81 and 56, when really there's a bigger difference between 81 and 56. And look at the extra wide bar here for DirecTV. That makes it look like there's way more for DirecTV, when in reality, Dish Network doesn't have that much less. Um, Keep in mind for the AP exam, so lots of AP exam tips going to be going on here. Don't forget your labels. So make sure when you are creating a graph that you have a horizontal and a vertical label as well as a numerical scale. So you can take a lot of time, create some beautiful graph, but if you don't have labels, uh, horizontal, vertical, and um, scale, then they will be, you will lose points. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so take a look at this one. I just want you to try this. Uh, here's some information. I would like you to take a second and make a well-labeled bar graph to display the data and describe what you see. So um, just give me some basic information about what you see and would it be appropriate to make a pie chart for the data? So go ahead and try this, hit pause, and then once you're done, um, hit play again. 
Okay, so when you did this, number one, did you make sure you had labels? So here's our bins about people that took photos of themselves, school name, where they lived. Those are your categories, okay? Um, and then what percent of teens who post up here? So this would be a relative frequency histogram because we're looking at a percent. And in this case, we can't use a pie chart because this is not a representation of 100% of the teens. So a in a pie chart, it has to add up to 100. Well, people that post photos of themselves is already 90%. People that post school names, eh, 70, that's already over 100%. So this is like overlapping data. Um, and with pie charts, we don't really have overlapping data. Okay, so let's just take a minute and take a look at two-way tables and what a marginal distribution is. So when a data set involves two categorical variables, so what that means is we want to look at the difference between maybe male and female and whether or not they own an iPhone or a droid. So those are two categorical variables, male and female, droid or non-droid. So a two-way table will describe two categorical variables and organize them as a row variable and a column variable. So here, we're taking a look at young adults, male versus female, that's one variable. The second variable is their belief and chance of getting rich. So our row variable is our opinion about whether or not we can get rich, and our column variable is the gender, male or female. Now, in this case, when you get a chart, I don't care where it is in statistics, make sure you find the totals for the rows and the totals for the columns and the total of the entire table. Okay, um, we're going to take a look at marginal and conditional distributions. So what a marginal distribution does is it just takes a look at one of the categories within your table and compares it to the total. So if we take a look at this example, if we want to examine the marginal distribution of the chance of getting rich, that means take a look at each one of your row variables and compare that to the total, okay? So we're comparing each category of chance of getting rich to the total, marginal distributions, we're always comparing it to the total in the graph, okay? So if we take a look, almost no chance, this is 194, the total between males and females and over the total of the entire table, which is 4,826. Okay, so we're basically comparing every row total to the total of the entire table. We're not looking at the difference between male and female opinion about getting rich. We're just specifically looking at the row variable. Okay. Now, if we wanted to look at the difference between males versus females, we would want to take a look at a conditional distribution. Marginal distributions don't tell us anything about the relationship between two variables, they just tell us about the relationship between one variable and the total. A conditional distribution will take a look at the variables within the table and be able to compare them. So we'll be able to compare what are the difference of opinions between male versus female. All right, so if we want to calculate the conditional distribution of opinion among males, what does that mean? Notice, number one, males is going to be our total, our new denominator, okay? So we're specifically taking a look at the male, okay? So 98 over 2,459. So we're looking at how many males think they're going to get rich. How many males think there's only a 50-50 chance of getting rich, okay? So conditional distribution specifically takes a look at comparing the two variables to each other, not necessarily to themselves or to the total, okay? And this allows us to take a look at the relationship between gender and opinion. Okay, so we can compare, all right, between males and females because we're taking a look at what is the difference, what's the percent of male versus female that think they're going to have no chance of getting rich, have a 50-50 chance, okay, and we notice that actually they're pretty similar. Males and females have similar opinions, okay, and we can also take a look at a segmented bar graph, um, which is a just another way of displaying the data. Okay, so just keep in mind, um, if you want to calculate the conditional distribution of opinion among males, we already went over this, um, 
make sure that you always find the total if it's not given. So if you're still a little bit confused on the difference between conditional and marginal distributions, go ahead and click on this YouTube video. It should give you a good explanation. Okay. Um, if you pause this recording and go ahead and the last couple of sections will be on the next recording that will be coming up that will take a look at the difference between association and um, causation.